Hey there friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex Lokes and today we're talking about developers, specifically a certain classification of developers. Those that use pyro-based chemicals as the primary development agents. I first was introduced to pyro developers by my good friend Matt Marosh and the Film Photography Project. And having used three different types of pyro developers, I found that they can be a powerful tool in any home developer's chemistry kit. So let's sit down and dig a little bit deeper into the mania surrounding pyro developers. Before we get into the meat of the video, let's address the elephant in the room. And that has to do with toxicity. Well, some film chemicals are less toxic than others. All should be treated with the same level of safety and respect. That can mean using appropriate PPE while preparing and using them. In addition, they should be stored in well-labeled bottles and out of reach of children, animals, and unfortunately, some adults. If you do see someone who has consumed these chemicals or you yourself have splashed them on your skin, you need to seek appropriate medical attention and that can mean administering first aid or calling your local emergency services number, 991 or 999. Additionally, appropriate precautions need to be taken while disposing of these chemicals. That can mean taking them to a local hazardous waste disposal unit. These are lo usually located at your municipal government's dump. Here in Halton Region in Ontario, Canada, this service is a free one, which means you can take your chemicals to the hazardous waste disposal unit and they will gladly take them off your hands and ensure that they are safely and properly disposed of. Pyro-based developers are among the oldest used developing agents out there. And before you counter with, what about Rodinol? It was first released in 1891, and it is the world's oldest commercial film developer. But in the early days of photography, developing agents, at least their precursors, needed to be naturally available. And as the creation of artificial chemicals was far from the average photographer of the day, the two main base pyro developers, pyrogalol and pyrocatechol, were organic, readily available in nature. In fact, a pyrogalol developer was first promoted by Frederick Scott Archer for his wet plate collodion process in 1851. This same developer was later used by William Jackson, T.H. O'Sullivan, and Carlton Watkins. The biggest issue with pyro-based developers is that they weren't entirely shelf-stable, especially pyro galol based developers. These tended to be only stable within an acid solution and oxidized fairly quickly. Now, pyro was slightly more stable but never gained the same popularity. Although there were some developers around in the 1880s that used pyro instead of pyro galol as the primary developing agent. Unfortunately, as science, time, and technology marched on, by 1910, pyro-based developers were something more of a niche developing agent for those who still used wet and dry plate photography. But pyro was far from dead and still saw extensive use, although in a much more limited nature. While the early pioneers of photographer had to be part artist, part chemist, Pyro developers were originally homebrew, along with most other things related to photography. But as the commercial photography business took off, there were some commercially available pyro developers. And one of the first ones is ABC Pyro, or Kodak D1. ABC Pyro used Pyro Galol as the primary and only developing agent and proved to be the choice of Edward Weston and Michael Smith. You would mix your working solution from three different baths, hence A, B, C, to form your working developer. Now, this is the most difficult pyro developer to handle and probably the closest that we have available today to the original pyro developers of the era of, of wet plate collodion. But people like Michael Smith and even some folks here in the 21st century still use ABC Pyro. Smith himself is someone who proudly promotes ABC Pyro as his one and only choice, especially when he's contact printing some of his large format 
work. In 1977, John Wimberly brought pyro back into the mainstream with the creation of WD2D Pyro. Wimberly used both pyrogallol and metol as a developing agent in a much more familiar two-bath solution, an A and a B solution, that are then mixed together with water to form your working developer. Wimberly touted WD2D as the pyro developer specifically designed for modern film emulsions. And most of our modern pyro-based developers come from WD2D. Gordon Hutchin, a Kodak engineer in 1991, built on the WD2D formula and released PMK Pyro. PMK Pyro used pyrogallol and metol as the primary developing agent, but also introduced a balanced alkali chemical called Kodalk. When compared to WD2D, PMK offered much more um, film speed, better staining action, and more importantly, shorter development times. Of course, there were still some that stuck to the old school. And in 1997, Harold Lieben released an updated version of the original ABC Pyro, known as ABC Plus, or better known as Rolo Pyro. Rolo Pyro continued to use pyrogallol, it also included metol, and potassium bromide as a restraining agent. Lieben also added ascorbic acid. It acted as an antioxidant to improve the stability and shelf life of the Rolo Pyro solution. Lieben claimed that his developer would cut the development time in half compared to PMK Pyro. It was also around the late 90s that Barry Thornton introduced a catechol-based pyro developer called Diaxtol. Thornton made the change because he preferred the stain color produced by catechol compared to pyrogallol. It also dropped the film speed by about a third of a stop, but you got better shadow detail and preventing the blocking of your highlights. What also made Diaxtel unique is that it was originally a two bath solution, but later updates brought that down to a single bath. In 1999, Sandy King introduced Pyrocat HD, a catechol based developer. King stated that Pyrocat HD would reduce your development times by 10 to 15% and give you an increased ideal film speed when compared to PMK Pyro. You get amazing de high shadow detail while retaining your highlights and the same long tonal range that you got with Diaxtol. Incredibly sharp and fine grained image, but you did have to stick to that A and B two bath solution. And one of the problems was is that while it had a long shelf life, it wasn't completely shelf stable. A variant was released to fix that with the addition of glycol. The newest addition to the pyro family is the 21st century 510 pyro. The creation of Jay DeFear first released in 2005 with an update in 2012. 510 pyro uses pyrogallol, metol, and ascorbic acid. And more importantly, it comes in a single bath solution. And what makes this different from previous ones is that it has an incredibly long shelf life. Being a single bath solution, it's a little easier to use once you get used to the fact that it's an extremely thick syrupy solution. If you're used to old school HC110, then handling 510 Pyro is going to be a cinch. With 510 Pyro, you still get that incredible shadow detail, almost full box speed out of the emulsions you develop in it and it's designed for use with stand developing and rot rotary processing. And when you go in to digitize your negative, you can pull out incredible amounts of details from both the shadow and the highlights. No matter what type of pyro developer you choose for your home kit, you do need to change a couple of things within your development process. First and foremost, do not use an acid-based stop bath. Use water only. Remember, you're working often with long developing times and highly dilute developers, and an acid stop bath will do damage to that stain that is being imparted onto your film negative. Secondly, you're going to want to switch up your fixer. My personal recommendation is Photographer's Formulary TF3 or TF4 fixer. These are non-hardening fixers, but they will also help retain that stain that is imparted onto your negatives. You can use your regular rapid fix, 
but you will see a reduction in stain. Now, for most of my pyro developers, I'll admit I do use a regular rapid fixer, Kodak Rapid Fix, and I do notice that there is a reduction in stain compared to negatives that I've fixed in TF3. Now, most modern film emulsions have integral hardeners built into the emulsion, but for those that don't, you can do a quick two, three minute um, fix in a rapid fixer once you've fixed in TF3, just to stabilize your emulsion. To date, I've worked with three different pyro-based developers, PMK Pyro, PyroCat HD, and 510 Pyro. And I'll be honest, all three are excellent choices as, um, as a pyro developer, especially within a modern context. If you work with the zone system or the precision metering method, pyro-based developers are going to be your friend as they are highly compensating. And if you do a lot of N plus or N minus development with your large format sheets, again, pyro developers are a perfect choice for that. And they work well in both drum and tray processing environments. These developers aren't a magic bullet. They certainly will help improve upon a film and it will definitely help tame some of the less ideal, less ideal traits of a film stock. Not all films like pyro-based developers, but it certainly makes a lot of films look really good. And if you're countering with, why do I want to use pyro developers? I don't shoot large format. Well. I've used both PMK, I've used all three with roll films, both 35 millimeter and 120. And they certainly help a lot, especially when, again, you want, you're shooting in a high contrast situation. You want to really tame some of the less ideal elements of your film stock and really bring out that fine grain and edge sharpness at the same time. And when it comes to your choice of pyro developer, it really comes down to what you want out of your film. If you've got a lot of time and you like to lower your box speed, then by all means, use PMK Pyro or PyroCat HD. If you're looking for more of a workflow that's hybrid, where you go and then digitize your negative and you want just something general purpose, by all means, 510 Pyro is the best of both worlds and certainly will work in both situations. One of the best parts is that today you can still pick up all the pyro developers that I've mentioned in this video through the photographer's formulary. And that includes ABC Pyro, Rolo Pyro, WD2D, PMK, and PyroCat HD. If you're looking for 510 Pyro, you need to go through Zone Imaging or one of their retail partners. And here in North America, the best place is Freestyle Photographic, but Zone Imaging does offer a great shipping rate that is a flat rate shipping to North America from the UK where they're based. If you're just beginning your film development journey, I do not recommend Pyro developers. But if you're looking for something a little more advanced to take that next step, by all means, pyro developers are a great place to go from once you've figured out Rodinol D76 HC110. Remember, these are highly specialized developers that are a little more fickle in their handling. If you're looking for a good place to start, I recommend PyroCat HD. It is by far the simplest to use. It comes in a standard two bath solution and is easy to pour and is relatively shelf stable. Plus you can buy it in either powder form which you mix with water to form the working, the concentrate or you can buy it already in liquid concentrate form. 510 Pyro is nice, I really like it, but again, if you're not used to handling that thick syrup that it has as its concentrate, it can be a little off-putting to a beginner but it is certainly worth a second glance if you've really felt you've run PyroCat HD its course. So let me know what your experience with Pyro has been. Which is the Pyro developer of your choice? I'm personally going to stick with 510 Pyro and PyroCat HD for all my future power Pyro developing use, and I definitely need to pick up 
some more TF3 fixers so I can actually do it right. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And of course, hit that bell notification icon so you can get notified when I release new content. And if you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up. And that's it for me. Until next time, get out there, stay safe. Fire doesn't always make things better, but pyro developers certainly do.